Hello everyone and welcome to this session of blockchain. My name is Saurav and I'm part of the Simply Learn team. Now let's get started and let's talk about what is blockchain and why are we here. Let's let's take an example of a money transaction which we all do generally. Now here we have someone who wants to transfer money from his account to his partner's account with whom he has done a trade deal. In a typical banking transaction, you will be transferring money from your account to your partner's account, but something can go wrong and the money does not get deposited and gets back to your account. What could be the problem? Why did that transaction fail and what went wrong? Okay, so here we have our Bitcoin assistant to tell you what could have gone wrong. There could be some technical issues at the bank which could have caused the problem. The user's account got hacked and it could be very well possible or you have exceeded the transfer limits for the day so you can't do the transaction again now there's a question which the cash currency will ask and the answer is that we are talking about bitcoin and it is a cryptocurrency so i'm going to tell you about what is a cryptocurrency what are the different types of cryptocurrencies in the market what is a blockchain how a bitcoin transaction works the features of a blockchain and we will talk about the walmart problem what is a cryptocurrency Cryptocurrency is a form of digital currency that can be used to verify transfer of assets from one party to another. It controls the addition of new units. There is limited supply and it also provides secure financial transactions. Anonymity of the sender and receiver is maintained. Sanity of the transaction is maintained. And all that is done using cryptography. The transactions are safe and secure. And the most important point is they are not headed by a central authority. So that means that cash can go extinct and we might not even need the banks either. The basic benefit with the evolution of cryptocurrency has been the low transaction cost. The underlying concept of having cryptocurrency is the removal of the intermediaries by virtue of which it reduces the transaction cost between the parties because more the middlemen, more the cost gets added on to every transaction. Now, what are the types of cryptocurrencies in the market? There are several. There are few other popular cryptocurrencies apart from Bitcoin, which have a major market capitalization and trading share is like Litecoin, Ethereum, Zcash, Dash, Ripple, Monero, NEM and Stellar. These are few to name with, but there are hundreds and thousands of cryptocurrency in the market which are evolving on a daily basis. What is blockchain? Now, Bitcoin uses a technology called blockchain to work the way it does. Blockchain is a continuously growing list of records which are linked to each other. So it's a list of blocks which are getting chained to each other and are secured using cryptography. Each and every block is digitally signed and hashed. Now, how does a Bitcoin transaction work? Let's consider the same previous situation, but this time let's make the transaction happen using a Bitcoin. Now, the same two entities who wants to exchange money, instead of that, they will be exchanging Bitcoins. But before that, they would have to create a wallet address on the Bitcoin network and each will be having their own private and public key. So whenever you want to send a Bitcoin on the, uh, on the blockchain network, you will be encrypting the transaction with your private key and broadcasting it worldwide for the miners to validate it. Miners around the world on the network will verify the authenticity of the sender, whether the sender has the right amount of balance to send that amount and the miner will also validate the receiver, the identity of the receiver, the genuinity of its wallet address and then it will verify the sanity of the transaction, whether the transaction can take place on the network or not. If verified, the transaction would be added to a block which would also contain several other transactions which are to be aggregated in that block and then once the block is verified, it will be added to the main blockchain. Once this whole process has been done, the miners have verified the block and verified the entire set of transactions in that block. Then the transaction show that bitcoins are reduced from the wallet of the sender and added to the receivers. And this is how the transaction, very similar to the banking transaction which we saw in our previous slides, gets completed without the intermediaries like banks. Now, so what makes Bitcoin so special? These are the few primary features of blockchain. It's a publicly distributed ledger, which means everyone has access to all the record. If the user wants, they can access all the records from the time the blockchain was created. The first block in the blockchain is called the Genesis block. 
any additions to the block are permanent and immutable any change major or minor is recorded into a new block and cannot be altered and this is the primary immutability feature of blockchain there is no centralized authority since the ledger is distributed the ledger cannot be altered by hacking into a central authority system like general hacking uh, incidents happen any change has to be approved by the majority of the people in the network and therefore there are algorithms for proof of consensus consensus algorithm exists in any blockchain network where the majority of the stakeholders have to approve the transaction blockchain can contain transaction details for assets other than money like property vehicles farming products or any asset which you want to trace in any industry like supply chain or you want to use digital assets in retail etc now how does encryption happens on a typical blockchain network so whenever a sender sends initiates a transaction he signs the transaction using his private key and all the details pertaining to the transaction like the receiver's address and the other details of the transaction are encapsulated and encrypted using the sender's private key now bitcoin uses the sha 256 encryption it is the encryption algorithm which allows you to create an encrypted output which is very secure and it is a very popular encryption algorithm the encrypted output is then transmitted across the world and the transaction after verification by the miners is added to a block. The SHA-256 enables the verification of the authenticity of the sender and receiver and provides the strongest security which is highly impervious to hacks. And most importantly, it ensures the anonymity of the users who have initiated the transaction and also the receivers who are going to receive it. Now let's take a look of a typical structure of a block in a blockchain. A block contains n number of transactions which are aggregated by the miner onto the block. Now here we are looking at a block header which has four attributes previous hash, transaction details, the nonce and the hash of the block itself. We'll take a look. Previous hash. The previous hash is the hash value of the previous block in the blockchain. This is how you are able to link one block to another as the current block has the hash of the previous block. Transaction details. The field contains the details of the various transactions which are aggregated as part of this block. Nonce. Nonce is the random value which is used to generate a hash value less than the target designated by the network for each and every block. The value of the nonce can be changed. It's a random value. And every time a nonce value is changed, the hash, it takes huge computational power of the miner to generate the hash again. So that's why miners need huge computational power and hardware in order to generate the hash and to guess the nonce in a stipulated time so that they can earn the reward. Hash. The hash obtained is a hex value that has both numbers and letters. Any change to the nonce, transaction details or previous hash will completely change the outcome of the hashing function. And that's why it is said that even if a hacker wants to try hacking a single block, then he has to change the hash of all the subsequent blocks. And in order to do that, it will take huge amount of computational power and time in order to change the hashes of all the blocks which are ahead of the hack block. So that makes it literally impossible in order to hack a blockchain. Now, proof of work involves several miners around the world who are using their hardware and computational algorithm to try and find the nonce value that satisfied certain predefined conditions regarding the hash value which has to be less than the target decided by the network for in order to verify a block. So miners are continuously working to maintain the sanity of the network to validate the transactions and to make sure that there is no corrupt block which is getting added to the blockchain. Miner in the process of mining gets rewarded with 12.5 bitcoins for finding the appropriate nonce first. The reward of 12.5 bitcoins exists as of today but bitcoins are going rewarding has been done by halving methodology. Some time back it was 25 bitcoins, now it has reduced to 12.5 bitcoins and in subsequent time it will come down to 6.25 as the number of bitcoins in the uh, network are reducing. There is a limited supply of bitcoins, it's capped at 21 million. 
as of today approximately 18 million bitcoins have already been mined so there are 3 million more bitcoins left the block is set to be mined once it's added to the blockchain the person the miner who finds the nouns that satisfy the hash requirement for the block is awarded the 12.5 bitcoin mining reward the last transaction in every block assigns 12.5 bitcoin to the miner as a reward and this is the only way to generate new bitcoins there is no other way the bitcoins are generated in the network now just to see one real life example blockchain isn't only used for bitcoin it is also used for supply chain management supply chain is the biggest industry in adoption of blockchain because in most of the supply chain use cases they have the use case of provenance and traceability of the asset which is being moving in the supply chain so the exact problem for walmart was to find the origination of the bad product in the supply chain when the products are returned they wanted to know where the bad products have originated in the supply chain now in a typical farming supply chain the entities which are involved are the farming the farmers then the logistics and transportation companies from the farming to transportation then they are transported to storage and warehouses where they are kept and then the distributed through the distributor and the retailer network they reach to the customer now there is a possibility that the product in the entire supply chain wherever it has changed hands it could have been made bad it could have been counterfeited or compromised so it becomes important for any supply chain company in order to know where in the entire supply chain the product was counterfeited or was compromised. So using blockchain, Walmart is able to determine where the issue with the product originated. They trace the entire journey of the product wherever it has changed hands the relevant parties and entities are asked to update the status the coordinates of the product on the blockchain network as the blockchain is an immutable ledger there is no chance of someone else fiddling with that information thereby the executives the management committee is able to trace the entire journey and proof that where in the supply chain the product was fiddled or counterfeited so you see blockchain apart from bitcoin is going to get adopted across the industries and is going to be there for a long long time i hope you had a great learning experience and i'll meet you in the next session thank you Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.